You know, there could be potential revenue sources where they can actually make an impact right off the bat. And it's not easy to identify those things because oftentimes the CEOs are not out there broadcasting what these opportunities are. In fact, in a lot of public companies, they're doing the exact opposite and they're covering it up and saying, like, everything's perfect, we don't have any cracks because they're trying to get shareholders. So this is one of those kind of community-based things where we're gonna establish trust with bigger companies and more established entities to say, look, you know, it's not perfect, but here's some of the things that we really could uh, identify as opportunities for entrepreneurs, and you get one-on-one -on -one base to, to go in there and actually try to figure that out. But I didn't put this whole project together. We have an amazing entrepreneur who joined our community, Rodrigo Alonzo, and he is gonna come up now and talk to us a little bit about why he's here. Yeah, no, you can take Thank your you. part. Thanks. I'm on uh, the earth. Yeah, I'm on the earth. Well, I just came to Las Vegas last year and uh, to downtown, and I really loved what is, was happening here with all the revitalization that was going on. But uh, it used to be really difficult for us to engage with other local businesses. So I say, what, what is going wrong here? Is my curious accent or <laughs> what am I doing wrong? So I started to collect more information from another startups, and they say exactly the same. It was really difficult for them to uh, get uh, and collide with uh, bigger businesses in Las Vegas. So with all, all that uh, feedback, I collected and I put it together, and I went to Mark Roland, the CEO of Downtown Project, who is gonna be on stage uh, later, and I tell him, look Mark, this is not working well. We need to do something. And I presented him this idea to have this event, which is a different event. An event where you don't have a speaker, a keynote speaker, telling all the great things he has done in the past, <laughs> which is very cool, by the way. But it's not the, the event that we need. We need an event where we have a CEO level of executive telling about all the opportunities that are within their company. And on the other side, the startups that can solve those problems. So this is the way this event started. So I really thank you for being here, and uh, to you, Dylan. Okay, thanks. I appreciate it. And um, I just wanted to take a second too to talk about Rodrigo's company is uh, wingitbunny.com. It's a great uh, new product where you can find out everything that's happening downtown. So I encourage everybody to talk to him about that too and um, support what he's doing. But the next thing we're going to do is talk about how this is going to actually go down. So. First off, it's the first time we've done it, anybody who has suggestions for it, but what, we're, what we've come up with for this first attempt is uh, to, to identify the four major opportunities in the downtown project. So we're gonna bring Mark Roland up here in a minute to talk about those. And we've actually pre-identified these, um, working with him and his team, and we've set up four tables in the back of the room, and you'll notice that each one has a number, one through four. Each table will have a representative from the downtown project in it, as well as one of the volunteers that's helping tonight. And when you go to the table, you're going to have an opportunity to ask more questions. I'm going to get the ball rolling by bringing Mark out here, and we're going to talk generally about him. But you know, think of ideas that you guys might have to solve these problems. Uh, think of business opportunities, and then take a moment to go to the table and explore more. And the way we're going to be doing it is with dice. So the actual people from the downtown project that are representatives are going to be rolling dice. And uh, it'll come up with a number one through 12, and they're gonna use that to ask somebody to present a question. So everybody at the roll of the dice might be asked, what question do you have? So you have to have something prepared for it. And if you get doubles, you get a free coupon to the market. Just saying. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring out Mark Rowland. Come on up. Thank you. Yeah. What up? You're not scared to sugarcoat it, huh? Not this time. Um, but anyways, so if we could go to the first slide. So you guys worked uh, with um, Rodrigo, identified a few things. The number one opportunity was basically getting more people to come downtown, the marketing, tourists, residents, app development. If you could expand on those uh, kind of four subgroups. Yeah, sure. So um, I, I don't think it needs a rocket scientist to realize that we could have more people walking down the streets of downtown Las Vegas. Uh, sometimes it's a bit sparse. So what we'd love to be able to do is to see if we can actually get more people to actually come to downtown to visit us, whether they be uh, tourists that are on the strip or Fremont Street experience to come to Fremont East area, whether it be uh, residents of Las Vegas to come to downtown Las Vegas more frequently, whatever it might be, we'd love to. That would be something that we'd love to see if we could actually solve that problem. That's a, that's a challenge for us. It's also an opportunity. 
and we've got some ideas internally as to building maybe a, a completely separate website called Explore DTLV and uh, with that maybe building an app that we can actually use, that people can actually come and maybe use this app and then go on a tour of Deck 10 by themselves, etc. We've started development on, on both of those things. Um, but yeah, we'd love to, so, love, so to expanding, love to understand. Expanding on that, what have you already tried? What have you learned from that worked and what have you learned from that didn't work that people don't need to replicate? Um, one thing we already tried was a downtown project app, which didn't, which was maybe a little bit insular. Um, it also didn't work because it was it was very time consuming to actually feed data into it. And the new app that we're trying to do, we're trying to make it more inclusive of everyone in the, in the downtown community. And by the way, we've defined downtown as Washington through to Sahara and Rancho through to Eastern. So basically anything in that community of downtown, we'd love to be able to kind of showcase to actually say to the world, hey, there's some amazing stuff going on, rather than it be just be downtown project related uh, things, which there weren't often enough of them. So it wasn't exciting enough to actually go on and check it out. Um, other things that we've tried, I mean, Life is Beautiful Festival is a good example of, of an initiative that we've tried to try and bring people downtown and give them a different experience in downtown and then go back to the communities and say, hey, downtown's really cool. It's a very expensive festival that we put up. Have, you got, it's a successful have you got some feedback that worked and some that didn't that you could share? I don't know, maybe you've made that. Not that, <laughs> that yeah. I mean, it's hard. You're bringing a lot of people in and then you're not sure what messages are going out. But um, I mean, I'm curious to kind of going back to like maybe the app or the way downtown project is in your head versus what the community is in everybody's head like how i mean is it is it a company that sits inside of an area or is it a thing that represents community in general that everybody's supposed to take part in or how do you see it fitting in um, well, the downtown project itself is a, is a company, it's an entity that's invested in a whole bunch of businesses. We've got about 45 small business investments, as well as a whole bunch of tech investments, as well as some businesses that we own and operate ourselves. But for this initiative, we just want this to be a bit more general of how do we get more people to come downtown, whether it's the arts district, professional district, how do we get more businesses to operate downtown, there's, there's lots of vacancies in our There's more, more feet on the sidewalks. And, yeah, because and then that, that brings us a more vibrant city, a more chance for collisions and connectedness, okay. and, um, and also a chance for everyone to succeed. So we, we, we see this as kind of like a rising tide, we'll raise our ships. Yeah. But if we can get, try and get more people to come to downtown Las Vegas, yeah. um, for whatever reason. Okay. And everyone on the next slide will identify the second one. So self-management software, um, you're talking about communication with employees, uh, metrics, and accountability. If you could expand on that. Sure. So um, self-management is a, is, a, is a term for when you basically say to someone you don't have a single job anymore. What you have is a collection of roles. So it'd be like me saying, okay, well, I, I am not the CEO. That's a title that someone gave me. But really what I do is I have multiple roles that I have within the company. So we're trying to find a way of actually making sure that everyone in our company knows the multiple roles that they have, what they're accountable for, and what their performance metrics are for all of their roles, and then how we can communicate with them better, how we can hold them accountable, um, how we can hold each other accountable. So when you implement self-management into a company, it's very different to how it used to operate. So you, we used to operate within normal traditional um, hierarchies and structures where everyone has a manager and that manager's job is to, is to tell you what to do, and to give you feedback and to decide whether you should get a pay rise. Whereas when you go into self-management, all that all changes. So the challenge then becomes you don't just have one job anymore where you report to one person. Now you have seven or eight roles that you perform within yeah. multiple teams. And everyone's got to know what their role is, what their peers' roles are, um, how that all works. We used, to, we used to adopt a system called Holacracy, and with Holacracy you get a piece of software called GlassFrog, which is really right. good. Um, so what we're trying to do is find a way of replicating what, all the great features that GlassFrog did, um, but actually in a, in a separate tool. We've scoured the world to see if, we, if anybody has one of these yet, and sadly there isn't any. There's a lot of people developing them. Um, but self-management has been talked about as being the next big wave of, of management in this country. So we see this as a great opportunity for someone if, if, if we could actually develop a way of actually making this happen. And just uh, if we could talk specifics about the name of the software that you guys have implemented before. So I know, um, yeah, I know, I know you have Glassfrog if they want to look that up on Holacracy's website. And then um, you were also using, uh, I don't know what it's called, is 
What, what other, okay, tell me about the other software. Okay, my oh, we've tried right lots now. of different things. Asana. We've tried oh, yeah, Asana. That's but but the only right. one we used yeah. for the self-managed implementation was Holacracy. Okay, to, so that'd be a place where they could look. We're trying to hack it at the moment and, and use different tools that aren't built for self-management, just that give us the same outcome. But, we think there's a great opportunity to actually, for someone to create yeah. something. Organ yeah, no, organize your own. I mean, it's as old as six hats, you know? Yeah. Gotta, get, gotta get on that. Okay, so uh, another opportunity you have is software for these drone races coming up, which seems really exciting. Yeah, so we're putting on a drone race on Sunday at the Western Hotel. Um, we think this is something that's gonna be really big going forward. We think there's gonna be multiple drone races. We think we can get a lot of sponsorship money for them. What we need to do is to create some software, to, to, twofold. One, event management software for an actual drone race. So we've got, on Sunday, we're hoping to get 40 races to come. Um, they need to register. They need to know what time it is that they're racing. We need to be able to plot what time they did when they raced, and who came first, second, third, fourth, fifth, who should be in the next heat, um, software that will then display the next four races that are coming on. So there's multiple races that last probably three minutes in duration, maybe two, two or three minutes in duration of the race. Um, so there's event management software. There's a company out there called MultiGP, which actually has created probably the first, the world's first drone-specific racing software. Um, we could either use, we could use that, um, or we could create our own. So we're looking to explore whether we can create drone event software. And then secondly, for the race itself, um, we think it's cool to have drones racing at 60 mile an hour around a, around right, a hotel, cool. um, but we think we can make it even better as a spectacle. We think we can, there's a few things we think we can do. One is have RFID tracking on the drones themselves, so that you can on your phone just look, um, you know, where, where all the races are in, in proportion to each other. So if you imagine, you know, when, you, when you're play, racing a game on your computer, like a F1 game or a, any racing game on your computer screen will always show you where you are versus the competition. Are you first, second, third? Um, so we'd like to develop right, that software. Some structure around that. And then secondly, the, as far as the race is concerned, we'd love to do Mario Kart. Now, Mario Kart, if you've ever played it, gave you the ability to race around the circuit and then go through certain, certain pollards and then get weapons and then fire weapons at your opponents. Yeah. So we'd like to do that with the drones as well. Okay. So, if, so if you could laser shoot the drone in front of you and like, pick up a weapon, go through an obstacle, pick up a weapon, shoot the guy in front of you, he loses power by 30%. Right, shoot. take a mushroom and do them and shoot yep. them and but that's 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 right behind you. Yeah, so Good. we think great with drones reality, well, yeah. technology yeah. that you can, you um, can play. Okay, so, so if somebody was like super interested in this and they went out and built it, who would they be selling it to? Like, what kind of market is there? Like, would they want to be selling it to the downtown projects? So are you bringing in, like, some kind of uh, drone sport it people? Who are, okay, yeah, that's, that's what I'm curious about, is where, well, we're putting what on business an event models called, do you think they could? Well, we're putting on an event called XDC, which is Extreme Drone Circuit. Uh, that's one of probably four leagues in the world that exist at the moment. Um, so this software could be sold to all of them. Like I said, MultiGP okay. is one of them, and they've already got their own software. So okay. they don't yeah. need any, anyone's software unless we create something really cool. And by the way, the, the other guys could, could use it. And the, and the names that are at the bottom of these uh, slides are the people who are going to be at the tables, too. So remember, you can always get deeper into the, some of these questions. Um, so Mark's going to actually be at the table for drone races. And then, um, you want to go to the next slide? And the uh, very last opportunity that we wanted to uh, identify today was needing better support for the tech ecosystem. George has a lot on his shoulders. So um, <laughs> what are some ways that people could use tech to help support tech? So one of the things that we've always wanted to do within the downtown project was try and create or help to uh, create a tech ecosystem in Las Vegas or make it better. Um, you can argue that we've been successful or unsuccessful in that, but we know that we could do better. We could have a better tech ecosystem in the city. It's, right now it's a bit fractured. But there's lots of different people all across the valley doing various things. There's co-working spaces all over the city. Love to see, you know, what we could all do together to try and try and connect the tech community together, or try and help them to do events like this and foster relations with larger businesses to try and get some funding in. See if we can actually build a branding up of, uh, of the Vegas tech community to try and get more investors to come and, and take the city really seriously. So, they're all the things that we've, we'd love to sort of explore to see what we could do to improve the tech ecosystem. Awesome, man. You're talking to the right guy there, too. So, Okay, so um, I think we're done looking at the four different opportunities, and we're going to break into the circles. So just um, can you actually go back a few slides? Just go for a refresher. So table one is going to be for people who are um, interested in or have ideas and questions about marketing, tourists, how to get more feet on the ground, like on these sidewalks. The second table that Rebecca's going to be at is going to be about um, the self-management software, which 
what I think is a lot of interesting project. And then, of course, the drone races that we just talked about and the um, better support for the tech ecosystem. So we'll break out to the tables now, and uh, hopefully you've got your juices flowing and get your ideas out there. Thanks.